Hello Cybersecurity Professionals, welcome to AV Cyberactive. Today we're going to look at data protection and data encryption, in other words, and why it's important. This is quite an important topic in the world of cybersecurity and it will keep coming in in your daily use and in your certifications and your meetings and discussions. Okay, let's start. Now, what's data protection or what's data encryption? It's the data encryption is the process of converting information into a secret code or cipher to hide its meaning. Now, using a specialized uh, encryption algorithm, uh, organizations can encode their data so it becomes indecipherable to anyone except the intended recipient who relies on another encryption algorithm on their end to decode that information. Now, the data too has three states, data at rest, data in transit, and data in use. So we'll also learn today how we can protect data at each state. Beginning with the first one, that is data at rest. So data at rest refers to any inactive data, meaning that it's not moving between devices or the network. Data at rest might include information that is archived in a database or any stored data on a hard drive, computer, or a personal device. Now we got our information that is getting generated from your main location, remote, home, hybrid, or mobile location. And it's the data is getting stored in your in-house server, rented server, third-party cloud server, or even the latest, that is cloud file storage. Now, anytime data is getting generated, it's getting generated from the end users and it is getting stored in any one of these servers where they, the data rests. So that's why it's called the data at rest. However, you would have to put in the appropriate protection mechanisms so that you can protect the data which is at rest. And uh, there are a few ways how you can protect your data at rest. I'll point out a few. The first one is to use a security software. The security software is something like an antivirus that can be used so that you can protect your data at rest. Implement a firewall. It can be then be host-based or network-based firewall. Most probably here we're talking about a host-based firewall. Use encryption, very important, like triple DES, AES, and other encryption standards. And the last one, that is deploy data loss prevention solutions to help you cater your needs and so that any of the data which is getting generated and has confidential tag attached to it should not go out of the organization without proper approvals. Now, if you want to know more about data loss prevention, I've covered the very basics of DLP. Check out the video on the cards over here. The next state of data protection or the state of data is the data in transit. So as the name suggests, data in transit is the data that is moving from one location to another. This includes your information traveling by email, collaboration platforms like Microsoft Teams, or your even WhatsApp Messenger as well. The data is generally less secure than inactive data given its exposure across the internet or private or corporate network travels from one place to another. So this makes the data in transit a prime target for attack. Now, obviously, we would have to know mechanisms to protect the data in transit. So I've got a few here. So the first is to identify critical assets and their vulnerabilities. So if you've got your data in motion passing through your wired network, so you have to identify which assets have data in motions and patch any vulnerabilities. So you should pro follow the proper vulnerability management and patch management policy of your organization. Next is to define your organization's framework for data security. So this might include defining the different type of technologies that you would use using an HSM or hardware security module so that you can protect your data in transit and apply the correct keys and policies to protect them. 
Next one, the last one is to implement necessary technologies and processes to protect your data in motion. So this includes having setting up a proper IPsec VPN tunnels when your data passes from your own organization to your external organizations. I've made a separate video on IPsec as well. Do check that video. I'll put that in the cards or in the description. And now the next and the last state of data, that is data it use. So data is in use when it's accessed or consumed by your employer or your corporate application, uh, whether it's being read, processed, or being modified. And also in this state, your data is most vulnerable in this state because it's directly accessible by the individual and it can even be eavesdropped and susceptible to human error as well, both of which can have significant consequences, all right? Now, encryption is essential of protecting the data and use as well. I shall walk through a few points how you can protect your data in use, beginning with ensuring that your software is up to date. So this means that the application that you're using should be free from vulnerabilities, and if not free, should be the latest version, forcing the use of strong passwords. So this is making sure that whenever your data is in use, you use strong passwords to protect the data that's in use. Conduct security awareness training, probably the most important because the data in use is the most susceptible to human error. Hence, conducting security awareness trainings or sending emails that simulate phishing attacks and check and see how many employees click, clicked on the link to see the effectiveness of your security training. And the last one that is uh, require authentication and permission for data access. This is quite simple to understand that you should always use proper authentication mechanisms and have proper authorization permissions for whosoever is accessing the data. Now, this was just a brief introduction to different states of data and how they can be protected. If you want me to go over any of the topics in detail, let me know in the comments so I can make some dedicated video programs on that one. At the very least, share this video with your family and friends whom you think would benefit by watching this video. I'll leave some links down below so you can study more on the states of data. All right, with this, I'll we come to the end of this video. I hope you all have a lovely day ahead. Bye now.